This technique is a cat stance round kick. Emily's going to step back into a fighting stance or a fudadachi. Good. Now, from here, she's going to draw back the right leg into her cat stance. Important thing to note the difference between a cat stance front kick and a cat stance round kick is that in a cat stance front kick, the knee is facing forward towards target. But in a cat stance round kick, the pelvis rotates all the way into an external rotation away from target. So the knee is now facing a 90 degree angle from where it was. Knee was open to me, now knee turns 90 degrees, faces in that direction. Now also, let's note something else that happened when she did that. Come back and rotate that again. Watch what happened to this foot. She rotates, that heel rotated. Now I don't want it to come to 6 o'clock because I think it's too much for someone who's first learning how to do a round kick. So it can come to about 5 o'clock, okay? And this foot, again, is going to change from 12 o'clock to a 3 o'clock position. So from here, I want her to chamber the leg. She'll hike the knee up. Basically, she's in this nice parallel angle with the floor. So she doesn't want the knee tilted down unless that's just her range of motion. She wants to take the knee as high as she can comfortably. At this point, she'll extend the foot, she'll recoil the foot, and she'll place the foot back onto the floor. Okay, we'll go ahead and take the knee up. Extend the foot, recoil, placing the foot on the ground. Give me a couple of these at speed. Good. Good. Now hold. Now you notice Emily has a lot of range of motion because she has a dance background. If you don't have that range of motion, don't push yourself. Don't try to kick higher than your leg can hold. Okay? That's a very important rule that I try to uh, instill in all of my students is if you can't hold your leg higher than this, don't kick higher than this. So wherever Emily can naturally hold that leg is where she should be kicking. And let's demonstrate the kick again. Good. Good. Excellent. Now you notice Emily kicks where Emily can hold her leg. If she were to try to kick outside of her range of stability, that would be basically like her trying to kick outside of where she can actually stabilize that leg when it's extended without speed and momentum. So go ahead and extend your leg out without the use of speed and momentum. And there it is. Hold it. Hold it by yourself. Good. So that's the height she needs to be kicking at. Let's return that. Good. And demonstrate that again. And there it is. And that's how you do a cat stance round kick. This technique is called crow pose. So Al's going to start in a squatted position. Good. Now, if he wants to set this up so he can get a nice crow pose, what he needs to do is get the hands shoulders width distance apart. And he needs to go ahead and bend the elbows a bit, basically creating a, a, a shelf, if you will, for the shins to rest upon. So as he shifts forward, now let me say one more thing. Make sure you guys spread your fingers open nice and wide so you got a lot of base and a lot of root. If you put your fingers together here, you've lost all the circumference of that base. So spread it open, get it wide. Now you have this huge base to work from, okay? So now, he's going to go ahead and shift his weight forward and start to place that weight onto the backs of the arms. He lifts the feet up. Now he keeps his heart, this area, lifting. So basic, and his, and his gaze, lift that gaze up just a hair, good. So this is what keeps him balanced. Because if he looks at the ground, take it everything to the ground. If he takes it even more to the ground like this and he starts looking behind him, it makes him kind of want to roll to his head. <laughs> Sorry, good. But it, it, you know, we, don't, we don't want that. What we want is you to lift through here, which will keep you more counterbalanced, okay? So come on down and rest for a second. So that's your basic crow position. If you've got a strong crow and you're looking for something a little more advanced and you want to work for crane, so let's go ahead there. In crane, you want the hands again in a shoulder's width distance. And now you want to place the knees onto the backs of the triceps, kind of almost in the armpits. And from here, he's going to shift his weight forward, lifting one foot at a time. Good. Now he's going to push that ground away from him, straightening out those arms. This is a really tough pose, but it's awesome. You can see he's looking kind of forward, which is lifting that, and he's tightening up there. He's about to fall because it's so hard. Okay, come on down now. 
<laughs> nice. That's a tough posture. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of that's just the belly drawing up. Seems like so much of it's about the arms, but it's really about the core being able to draw you up there. So that was crane. The one before that was crow. You can play with the variation of those two. And uh, fantastic way to, to learn to balance on your hands. This technique is called dancing dog prep. So Emily's going to go ahead and begin in a downward facing dog. Again, she steps into a fantastic plank to find the alignment, presses back to downward facing dog. Again, spreads the fingers, works really roots into the floor, shoulder heads open, traps drawing down the back, spine long. Okay, so let's bring the feet together. Let's take the right leg to the sky. Good, again, neutral pelvis, looks great. Nice long lines here, beautiful demi point. So now she's gonna raise up onto the back foot. Good. She's gonna start rolling forward as if she's doing rolling knee, drawing that knee in. She's gonna get about halfway through the exercise, not quite shoulder heads over wrist, more about uh, somewhere in the middle here. When she starts to rotate, this is very important, she starts to rotate this heel towards her hands all the way around, it's a 180 degree turn, clean turn. Let's do that one more time, it's so important. So she rotates, again, all the way around, 180 degrees. Now this leg has threaded itself through and will extend out fully straightened and energized, all this energized so that there's no pressure on the joints. This extended foot is flexed, toes drawn back. She's going to now, this is a three point base, one point, two point, third point. She's gonna now lift the pelvis up and express the position. She's reaching back with this hand. She's getting a nice stretch in this middle back, really important. But while she's doing this, she's staying very stable. This is a really important concept. Now notice that the shoulder head's right over the wrist. If she were doing this the wrong way, let me take you out the wrong way, M. She would have no stability here. This would not be comfortable. So she really has to have that shoulder head right over the wrist for her to have true stability. And she's got to keep that base foot that was pivoting the heel bent almost at a 90 degree angle. If she takes that leg out forward, no stability there. She falls and collapses. So it's very important that this knee stays bent while this leg that she had threaded through stays long and extended with the foot in the flex position, working on the outer edge of the foot. Now to return, she needs to lower the pelvis down first. Draw the elbow and the knee back towards one another. At this point, she will rotate back towards the floor and make contact with her hand back into the same position that she started with. So if she places her hand over here, over here, over here, even anywhere off center, she's going to come back to a poorly aligned downward facing dog. So she's got to place her hands right back into a shoulder width distance apart as she takes that foot back to the sky. Now let's take it back through one more time. Just go and bring it, just go ahead and extend it through because I want to show them this. What, what, I'm looking, what I'm looking for you to really see here that's very important is that when she draws this foot back in, uh -huh, let's take it all the way back, watch that heel. Do it one more time. So watch this heel as she rotates back around and it goes 180 degrees returning to its original position. And you see, she would be completely out of alignment if this heel wandered in any direction, forward or back. So it's very important the whole time that you keep that ball of the foot or metatarsal, this area, rotating in a small circumference the entire time this is happening. And there's your dancing dog prep. This technique is called Fighting Warrior Two. Emily's gonna begin in a Warrior Two static posture. As you can see, let's look at the fundamentals of this posture. Front foot is 12 o'clock, knee is over the ankle, back leg is strong, really, really activating that back thigh. She's pressing the outer edge of that foot into the floor. She's got the belly firm, ribs tucked. 
Shoulder heads drawing down, lengthening the crown of the head, two energy lines going in opposite directions. So she's in a very good warrior two posture. Now she's going to slowly start shifting back. And she's going to start, she, well, she's going to come into a cross block position first. We've talked about that. This is to protect the body during the blocking transition. She will then, this hand will scoop and block the lower leg. This hand will scoop and block the head. And I say scoop because that, that action is what's happening during that bump. So she's blocking with this part of the arm here as opposed to blocking along where the uh, arteries are. She's blocking with the bone here. Good. And this hand doing the same thing, blocking palm down here. Now she's sinking really in this because this is a hip opener. We're really trying to open up these hips, get down into this. So you notice also, let's come back to that first position real quick. You notice what happens here in this front foot. Very important. Watch this again. As she shifts back, this heel rotates 45 degrees. Okay, so it goes from here all the way to here so she can turn away. If she tried to do this with her foot straight, try to do this, her knee would be in jeopardy and she would not really be in a good stable position for martial arts. So she always wants to rotate that heel and please rotate on the ball of the foot. Do not rotate on your heels. You'll have no balance. Okay, now from here, she's going to shift forward. She's going to scoop this hand in. She's going to turn the palm to the sky and lunge forward with this. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people will say, well, you're never supposed to take your knee over your ankle. But here's the reality. This is something done to protect the common masses in movement. If your knee is strong and you can shift forward comfortably, you can take your knee over your ankle. If your heel starts coming off of the floor, there's a danger there for me as far as I'm concerned. I want that heel on the ground and if you can take it there comfortably without putting pressure on that joint, you're okay. The minute you feel anything similar to pain, take it back. You're working too far up against that edge. So it's a very simple idea. You can come as deep as you want into this pelvis, as far as you want, as long as you're comfortable and your range of motion is there. So she takes it back. Let's demonstrate just that technique a couple times by itself. Good. Comes back, lunges through, beautiful. She really gets down in those hips because that's what this is about, opening up the hips and reaching. Beautiful. Now let's look at the advanced version. Let's come back to the block position. So from the block position, now she's going to reach forward and she's going to come up and basically extend out. It's a balancing posture. She's just really working on that balance. Come on down, nice and slow and smooth, beautiful work. Good. So what this is really about, again, let's do it again. This is about coming up and finding that balance there. Good. And coming back down. Nice. Well done, Emily. Hold there. Good. And that is Fighting Warrior Two. This technique is called floating frog. Al's going to come into a downward facing dog. From his downward facing dog, he's going to place a soft bend in the knees. He's going to gaze forward between his fingertips because he needs to know where he's going. So when he hops his feet to the outsides of his hands, he's going to have a great idea of where he's going to land based on his vision. So he's going to softly float the feet. Both feet will land on either side of the hand. Good. Now, you notice how soft that was because he kept his core activated and his cobra hood activated. So again, step back out. Let's demonstrate that a few times. Again, he looks forward. He softly bends the knees and he springs forward. Nice. Excellent. So he's really floating there. And uh, much of that is based on the fact that he's being very careful not to push too much forward and not too much up. He's doing a nice arc with the float. So again, let's demonstrate that one more time. So he bends the knees and notice, watch his pelvis arc up and down. Nice. Okay, let's give him one for the folks at home. So in case you're slightly intimidated by that, we've got a lot easier version for you. Just keep your feet low, nice and soft. It's a simple technique. Good. So again, if he turned off his core and he turned off his cobra hood, this is what it would sound like. 
So this is how you know whether you're getting that activation here in the belly and in the cobra hood. So one more time, do it the wrong way, one more time. No, you're floating too much, do it again. Good, he can hardly do it terrible. Okay, one more time, step back, let's do it the right way. Here we go, bend the knees and keep it low like the folks at home when they're first learning. Nice, okay, great. There's your floating frog. This technique is called front kick. Emily's going to step into a Fudadachi or fighting stance. Let's face camera with this one time first, then we'll rotate around. Let's work through our six positions from this kick. First position is fighting stance or Fudadachi. Second position is Zinkutsudachi or forward facing stance where the pelvis comes into a neutral rotation. Front foot does not turn until the third position, so stay still. Let's demonstrate that one more time. Rotation, rotation. Good. Now from here, I'm going to give you some balance. She's going to rise up to a chambered knee position. That's third position. She's going to extend the foot out. Full extension. Foot is in a demi point. Very important so that you don't break your toes. You can't kick things with your toes. Your foot must be in a full demi point for several reasons. Let's re rest for a second. I want to talk about this demi point. Go ahead and give me that front kick to me. So when she extends for this front kick to me, well here's what's important, not only can she not make contact with her toes because she would break them, but number two is once this foot is activated, it creates a muscular brace around the knee joint and the ankle that really works its way all the way back to the hip. So when she relaxes this foot, the whole leg relaxes. You can see it physically relax. When she flexes, you can see the thigh and when she relaxes whole leg changes. So this activation is paramount to being able to deliver a, a uh, technically correct front kick while protecting the joints. Good. So now let's finish breaking it down. Stay where you're at. So I'm going to be a balance bar for you. You're going to hold my arm. Let's go ahead and rotate into position two. Good. Zinkutsudachi. Position three. Chambered knee. Position four. Extension. Position five recoil or rechambering of the leg and position six a stepping back into position. Okay now let's look at a front kick at full speed. Nice, good. Let's step back show them a few times. Good. Notice that Emily has a fantastic recoil with her kick so if she were to extend that leg it would be easy to catch so she recoils in order not to grab that leg as she's kicking. So if she's kicking me here if she's got to really pull back a little faster on the recoil. And so she's really not looking for me to be able to grab that leg. You better do it faster than that. Fast. Good. And again, faster, faster, faster. So, and kick me. Faster. Good. That's the way it needs to be done. Quick with speed. You've got to be committed to the movement because you don't want to pretend to do a front kick. You want to really do it, deliver a properly executed front kick. So. That's how front kick is done. This technique is called knee strike. Emily's going to step into a fudadachi or fighting stance. You'll notice in this stance that the feet are visible to you as the camera or you as the audience. You can see both her back foot and her front foot. If she steps her back foot behind her, she's in a straddle stance. We like to work our techniques out from this immovable or fudadachi stance, which is the foot is a little offline in the back so that the pelvis is a little bit more towards the um, towards your opponent as opposed to completely being externally rotated away from. So now from here, she's going to rotate this back heel. This is our second position. Our first position is here. Our second position is here. This is called Zinkutsudachi or forward facing stance. Now our back heel is working its way into the floor nice and strong and she keeps his foot solid so as she moves his back foot back and forth you see there's no rotation happening here. Good. Now one more time. So now when she rotates on this third position this heel does rotate and allow the pelvis to open up. So she's going to draw this knee up as she comes through and notice how this heel, let's do that again. I'm going to hold it oh here, use my arm for stability. Now notice on this next rotation as this base heel rotates towards target or towards you as the camera. Good. Taking it back. 
Good, and one more time. She's in one, she's in two, now she's in three. Chambered knee. Look at the demi point, the nice clean. She's tucked real tight. Let me turn you around. Hop around slightly. Now, notice the tight chambering she has here. If this leg was loose, it, it wouldn't, w w it, there's a reason we're looking for that. The tighter that chamber is, it's almost like pulling a rubber band back so it's got more energy, you know, as, it, as we release it. So she wants this tight so when she extends for a front kick, it fires out. Let's do it quicker. Uh, quick, quick. There you go. Okay, step it down. Okay, let's go ahead and demonstrate that knee strike full speed. Good. Good, a lot of good control there. A little quicker. There it is. Now gain forward. Come on, step forward with it. There you go. Step back one more time. There it is. Nice. Draw in, pull in as you do it. There you go. Notice how she keeps her hands up the whole time. She never drops her hands by her side. This would be the wrong way to do this technique. Right? R leaving her head wide open. So she keeps her knees up in case this happens. So she's always protecting her head. All right. There's your knee strike. This technique is called Komodo Dragon. We're going to start with Alan on his belly. Good. He's going to bring his knee to the outside of his elbow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our toes under us, Al. Go ahead and lift up. Good. Now, as you can see right now, he's completely off of the floor. He needs a, he's got a pretty good strong base here. Let's go ahead and lay it back down one more time. Let's take this hand further forward. What we're trying to do is create in the body a, a, a proper balance and alignment. So because this leg is extended back, we're going to extend this hand a little bit more forward. Because this foot is drawn in, we're going to draw this hand in a little bit forward. So it creates almost a, a sideways push-up. If you've ever wanted to do a one-arm push-up, this is exactly the way that you would uh, begin cultivating the kind of strength that you would need for that because this causes, go ahead and come up off the ground. This causes, when Al lowers down, it causes a major shift into this particular shoulder. It's almost like he's doing a one-arm push-up with this arm. Okay, relax for a sec. Good. So now, here's the tricky part, and this is what takes you back to your uh, early days of crawling on the ground. You've got to switch your feet out and your hands opposite arm, opposite leg. That's the tough part. So what we're going to do is we're going to move opposite arm, opposite leg. And in this particular case, as this leg, which is drawn in, extends out, this hand is going to draw in. So let's do it one time. Keep your eye on these two limbs. Okay. Good. So you notice that now as this left leg extends out, this right arm will, ex will come in and contract in. Okay, so basically he's going opposite arm, opposite leg through the whole exercise. And he's staying in place and he's switching it out. It doesn't have to be dramatic. You can do this pretty laid back. Go ahead and do it a few times, just nice and soft. Mm -hmm. Now make it more dramatic. And you can see, okay, rest. So you can see how much energy you can, can vacillate between really, really working here and taking it easy and doing a little lighter, softer exchange. This is an accessible technique for most people. And if, if it's really, really super tough for you, a great modification might be staying low and letting your knee slide across the floor. Let's demonstrate that, Al. Great. Now this wouldn't be fun on carpet. But if you've got a hardwood floor, you're going to be better off. So this is basically the way you might modify a technique such as Komodo Dragon. Another modification, if you don't have access to floors without a carpet on them, might be to simply lift up, step one arm, one limb at a time, exchanging, lowering down, and working that push up. Might not look like the funnest way to do it, but it will get the job done and you'll learn how to build the strength that's necessary for doing Komodo Dragon like this. Great. Before this, Al could hardly move. So there's your Komodo Dragon.
Our next technique is called a rolling crow. Alan's going to begin in a plow pose. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and extend his feet out in front of him, roll himself onto his back, extend his feet back behind him. Now, from here, what we're going to notice about plow pose that's very important for you guys out there is to keep your neck safe and protected. So you want to keep it long and spacious. If you bring your chin to your chest, sometimes that crunches the neck. So if you lengthen out that neck, it really makes a big difference. A little teeny adjustment there. Reaching the arms back, toes curled under, balls of the feet. If this is not easy for you and you don't have the range of motion, don't worry about it. If your feet come up here, because this is all you can get to, it's perfectly fine. If they come up here because this is all you can get to, that's okay too. It's up to your range of motion. Individual range of motion does not dictate whether someone is good at Budokan or good at yoga. What's important is that you are in a safe and comfortable position for your body alignment. Okay. Now from here, he's going to roll down again vertebra to vertebra. He's going to roll down. He's going to put a soft bend in his knees. He's going to roll out of this posture. He's going to now come back right there. I want them to see that real quick. Notice as he came through here, as he came through, he opened his knees up in order to create space. Sometimes when I'm teaching people, they bring their knees together and they go, why can't I get up? Why can't I get up? <laughs> well, because you're blocking your whole chest. Open your knees and roll through, placing your hands a shoulder's width distance apart. From here, he bases the knees onto his arms and he comes into crow piece of cake. He's going to drop the feet back to the floor and he's going to drop the hips back, rolling back into plow pose. And he's going to do that, do it a couple times for now. He rolls up, sets that posture up, comes into crane that particular time, takes it back. It's coming to crow for him. This is the easier variation because you've got the arms as shelves. Feet come down, take it back, extending back, getting that nice lengthened out plow. That's it. Watch that chin. Good. Good. Releases his feet back to the floor. Lets himself roll back into plow. And he rolls forward, plants the feet, opens the knees, bases the hands, comes into crow. And again, rolling back. He's going to use a little momentum. That's the whole idea is to come up and kind of stick that.